Hey, welcome to Kate Crafts. I'm Kate. Today I would like to share with you Beware, featuring the Spooky Forest Backdrop by Lawn Fawn. Let's get started. So off camera, I have gone ahead and cut this out four times, and I've gone ahead and cut the hillside trees out twice, and we are going to glue everything together. There's quite a bit of gluing in the first half of this video, so I understand if you don't want to watch the glue dry with me. But for those of you sticking around, thank you. <laughs> or if you haven't clicked off this video yet, thank you. I, I try my best to be entertaining to you guys, despite some of the stuff that comes out of my mouth or lack thereof. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to go around and I'm going to glue each of these tree branches. And we are going to layer four stacks of these together. But first we're going to do two and then we're going to do two. And I am using a 110 pound cardstock by Recollections because I ran out of the 65 pound cardstock. And yeah, I figured I can't bring myself to buy any more just yet because I have so much of this and it's very rare that I use it for card bases that I thought it would suffice for backdrop dies like this one. So once I've got all of that glued down, I'll make sure to line everything up, give it a good mash, and then I will tuck it underneath my Misty so it's got something flat to sit on underneath. And then next, I'm just going to use my hill here and kind of give me an idea of where I need to have the glue. And then we will flip this over and we will have our little hillside there. And this is kind of like a layering card. I mean, I probably could have got away with just doing it this way, but for some reason I had it in my head that I was going to do a shaker. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to cut those little trees off and I'm going to take this over to the guillotine trimmer here and we're just going to trim off the excess from the panel cab full very careful not to trim the actual panel itself just the excess and then I'll do that the same for this side and as well this bottom so this I think measures five and a half by four and a quarter so it's a true a2 size card which is nice so once I've gotten all that out of the way, we are going to take the other one and we are going to line everything up and then I'm going to kind of eyeball where I need to cut because I don't want the extra layer underneath. So I'm going to cut off that bottom bit there. Now I probably should have took a little more care and actually mapped that out first before I glued everybody together like that because I end up having to go back in and put little wedges of cardstock in because I realized I wasn't going to have anything of the bigger variety for this shaker card and I ended up resorting to glitter, which isn't necessarily my first choice. So you'll see here in a bit. But once I've got all of that glued down and I'm satisfied with it, we are going to take the fifth layer that I had cut out of 110 pound cardstock and we are going to add a piece of acetate that is just under four and a quarter and just under five and a half and I'm very carefully going to line everybody up and then give that a good mash down and I'll let that dry underneath my misty until I'm happy with the adhesion. So once I've cleaned all that off we are going to get ourselves up into some distress ink oxides. Distress oxide ink. Just blah, 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 blah. Distress oxide ink. Wow. <laughs> that was difficult, guys. So I've gone in with some fossilized amber. And then this one right here is the smi Smiced Marmalade. The Spiced Marmalade. And then we are going to go in with some abandoned coral. <laughs> that one was easy to say. And we're just going to kind of create this little bit of a gradient. Um, this was a new combination for me. I had to look up on Pinterest Autumn Sunset just to kind of give myself an idea of what I was going to do. Because I tend to gravitate towards the same combinations of ink. And I really wanted to push myself out of that for this card because... I don't know, it's a new backdrop die and I was quite excited about it and I didn't want to just do any old background. I wanted to do something fancy. So I'm using these colors and I think that they, the gradient of them is quite nice. But 
I wanted to darken up the edges, so we are going to go in with some aged mahogany. And then you'll see in a bit that I do come back in with all the other blender brushes just to soften out that harsh edge of the aged mahogany. And I really like this combination. I thought it was really nice and it really gave you that autumn crispy feel. You know, the kind where you wake up and you got to wear a hoodie or a sweater or a coat to work. And then, and then by the time you're ready to leave, you're, you know, you're regretting your decisions if ever bringing one because it's actually warm now. So we have this Tangelino, some Ruby, and I forget what the other one is. The other one is, where is it? Oh, Golden Rose. And we are going to, yes, splatter. We are going to go all willy-nilly with this. I'm not going to take two cares about how big my splatters are. Now, I think I might not, I might be mistaken, but I think the longer the brush is, the better the splatter. Because this is a short brush, and when I was doing this, I wasn't too excited about my splatters. But I usually use like a longer brushed, um, paintbrush to do these. So I don't know. I'll have to experiment that with that one day. So I'm just hitting this with my heat tool because I'm impatient and hate waiting for paint to dry. So I'm just going to make sure that that is nice and dry and we are going to come back in with our panel. Now see I could have just left this right like that but I'm going to add in some of this lost shadow to give the illusion of a little bit of fog. And I end up fussing with this too much, and I don't really like how the trees turn too white because I wanted this to be like a spooky scene, and I didn't want the trees to... Yeah, I wanted the trees to keep the darkness because you've got that, that sunset in the background, and usually when you're looking at the sunset, everything in front of it's kind of dark. And I kind of lost that when I put too much of the lost shadow on the, to the trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my little mini Herbie Kirby that I got from the people selling Herbie Kirby's at my last market. And I think it is absolutely adorable. And if you don't have a Herbie Kirby or know what it is, it's just a big, giant, glorified <laughs> rolly trash can that is so much easier on our poor... Um, garbage people because they don't have to lift anything. They just hook it to the dump truck and it kind of lifts it up, chucks it in, and then puts it back down and they just wheel it back to the spot they found it in. And yeah, I was quite quite pleased to get a little mini one for my craft desk. <laughs> so once I've taken the Wink of Stella that I had and splattered all over the place, we are going to, yep, we are going to add more glue. And this is where I kind of run into some trouble. You see those little gaps right there? I could have cut it a little bit better, but it didn't. So we're going to add a little dollop of glue and we are going to push a little wedge of cardstock in there. And that's going to act like a plug because I end up using some glitter. Now, the glitter that I'm using is actually one that I've probably had for 10 years, which is the red one. And then I've got the little tiny silver micro beads, which I think I came from the dollar store. And then I have like these cotton candy frosty looking pink ones that came from Michael's in a big kit of glitter. And then I have some high supply stars as well as this Gosh brand. Now this is actually, the Gosh is actually a makeup brand and I believe it's nail art glitter, but I mean... I work at a factory, so I can't keep pretty nails, or if I do, they don't last long, so I tend to use this for more craft-related projects as opposed to pretty fingernails. That's why I don't wear a lot of nail polish, because I wear it, and then within a day at work, regardless if it's gel or fake acrylic nails or what, they just get destroyed from work, so sometimes I'll do it, but most of the times I gave up. So again, with more glue, we are going to go around the tree. Careful not to get glue on the inside, but we want to make sure that we create enough of a seal for that acetate to adhere to that you don't have glitter falling out all over the place. So once I'm done dabbing everybody with a healthy dose, but not too much of a healthy dose, I'm going to mash all of that down and we are going to let this sit off to the side to dry. 
And then I thought I needed a sentiment, and I wasn't sure what, and I've got this really pretty orange holographic paper from the dollar store last year that I never got to use. And we are going to take some of this score tape that I have in, in an 8 by 11 sheet, I think it is, or an 8.5 by 11, and we are going to create our own little sticker. So I'm just measuring everything out, and then I'm going to take my letters from the Henry's ABCs, and we are going to spell out B war, but we're going to take that B out and put an E at the end. So it says beware. So you can see here I'm pulling everybody up. I'll pull off that E. I'll grab my pokey tool and I'll poke that little sucker out and then I'll cut out another E. So once I'm done that, I didn't want to waste it. So I ended up putting the sticker on some black cardstock and then putting the little inserts in for all the letters and then I thought well you know what that'd be nice to line everything back up and then all I'll have to do is peel off the backs and that's what I'm doing here because these are stickers now. So once I'm done that I will take my low tack tape here and I'll line it up where I want it to be where I'm not sure exactly but we're going to settle on here. So I'll give everybody a little piano tap and make sure everybody's st stuck down and then it needs something else, so I'm taking my Uniball white gel pen at a point one or 1, or 1.0, I should say, and I'm just going to go around the tree. I wasn't sure that I was going to love this idea, but in the end, when I look at the finished result, I thought this was like a nice added touch that kind of drew your eye into the card itself, and it didn't leave the, the black card stock just bare, like... I don't know, I mean, I could have put little gems and jewels on the card itself, but you see here how the glitter just sticks to the acetate. I mean, it still looks cool, but glitter's not my favorite. And here you have my finished card. So if you've enjoyed today's content or found it helpful, please give this video a like. I also welcome you to subscribe as I post weekly. Here's another video I think you might enjoy. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Take care.